Welcome to my 2020 mock draft. If you go and look at the last video I released, um, it was my draft board, which will be different from this mock draft. That one was just my rankings. Here's the actual mock draft. And um, I see no reason not to get straight into it. So yeah, here's my 2020 mock draft. It is a much better presentation than the last one. So with the first pick, I have the Minnesota Timberwolves selecting Anthony Edwards. I think he's the best fit for the Timberwolves. He can have D'Lo handle the ball, be the main uh, main guard in the offense, have Anthony Edwards play off ball, which, if you go and look at the fourth point, needs to work on a shot selection. Without the ball in his hands, he's going to have a much better shot selection, I believe. Um, he's also a great athlete, one of the better athletes in this draft class, and that's why I think he's a great comparison to Dwayne Wade. Can sh can shoot the ball fairly well. Once he get when he gets a good shot, he makes it. Um, great athletic shooting guard. I think Anthony Edwards is the clear pick here. Number two, I have the Golden, Warriors, Golden State Warriors taking James Wiseman. He is personally my best player in the draft. If you go and watch my last video, um, I think he's the has the high, second highest potential um, out of everyone. But he also has a safer floor than the um, than the person with the highest potential. Um, he can stretch the floor, maybe not all the way to the three point line consistently but at least a solid mid-ranger. Um, he's a great rebounder, definitely the best rebounder in this class, definitely the best big man, I would say. The only problem with him is he can be a little bit antsy when trying to protect the rim. He jumps at a lot of things, so a little bit more patience down there, uh, just learning when when to jump, when not to jump. And the, a prime DeAndre Jordan, I think, is a perfect example. can stretch the floor a bit. Not always, a, I guess, maybe a Chris Bosh always also comes to mind just with a little bit better um, rim protection. So a, co a combination of DeAndre and Chris Bosh, and you get James Wiseman, I believe. I think another one has been Anthony, um, has been um, Andre Drummond. I just had a massive blink there. Um, yeah, that's, I think, great fit for the Warriors, too. I think perfect fit for the Warriors if they don't trade this pick. Also, this is with no trades, because, um, well, no trades that have happened. Um after November 17th, um, 11.30, I think is what time it is, yeah, 11.30, any trades after that, so any trades that happen during the draft, right before it, aren't in this, and it's not working again, dang it, uh, and sneak peeks there, um, pick number three, the Charlotte Hornets take LaMelo Ball, um, he's by far the best available, um, he is the one I think who has the greatest potential um, because there are also question marks around him. We don't know everything. We don't know about as much uh, about um, Mel Ball as we do with Wiseman and um, Edwards. Um, we just know he has shown flashes of being great. I, and I think his best quality, even Andrew Rogat has spoken on this. He is an elite passer. I, I wrote great passer. He's an elite passer. One, probably one of the best, the best in the draft, and already one of the better passing point guards in the NBA. I would say, um, just like Anthony Edwards, though, he needs to work on his shot selection. Um, once he gets that down, he's going to be great. I don't think him being drafted by the Hornets helps with that shot selection, as he will probably be the main offensive focus, along with um, Devontae Graham. I'm having a mental just lapse today um but yeah along with um Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier depending on how they want to play that but I would say his comparison is Jason Kidd um great playmaker but they need to get some help around the middle ball oh, this is gonna be annoying there we go Chicago Bulls select Obi Toppin he was the best college player um he saw I would I would personally say one of the maybe not the best available great potential um, he's very good in transition. I just, just imagine, like, a fast break. I'll come to this again. I, I'll be fast. This is another great fast break player. Um, good in transition. You have a Kobe White, Zach Levine, um, Otto Porter, Obi Toppin, and Lori Markin in fast break, or Wendell Carter, whoever you want to throw in there. Um, yeah, like, that's the thing with Obi Toppin. He provides versatility, not just in a transition set. When you look at now the three big men for the Chicago Bulls in this scenario, 
You have Obi Toppin, Laurie Markkinen, and Wendell Carter Jr. Wendell provides you that, um, like the traditional big man, the rim protector, the post player. Uh, Laurie Markkinen stretching the floor, and then Obi Toppin is um, can stretch the floor, but it's a better, um, just a better movement player, like more fluid, and his movements can move quicker. Uh, not as tall as Markkinen. So there are just so many possibilities out there. You could even put, uh, you could go big, have Toppin at the three. I think that would work fairly well. But um, yeah, he isn't the greatest defender, and I think Amari Stoudemire is a great comparison for Obi Toppin. Um, yeah, I think he should be the fourth overall pick. Fifth to the Cavs, Onyeka Okungwu. Um, this pick, I am hoping, gets traded to the Boston Celtics for the right for the right price. I'm I'm a Celtics fan. I really want Onyeka Okungwu. But, um, but yeah, for the Cavs, Drummond's not the future. Bye-bye. Okay, you got on Yekka Kungu now. Now you have three solid pieces. You have Garland, Sexton, and Kungu, and then um, Chetty Osman, the three, Kevin Porter. Well, I don't know about Kevin Porter anymore. Okay, what just happened? Thanks, Adobe. Now go away. Um, yeah, so... This provides a great building block for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He has great defensive potential, great rebound, um, rim protector. If he was James Wiseman's height, best player in the draft. But he's a little bit smaller, but is very physical. Um, plays big. Again, doesn't have the height, and his offensive game isn't quite there. Has great potential, but needed a little bit of fine-tuning, which I don't know if the Cavaliers is the best place to go for that. But a comparison would be Bam Adebayo. I don't expect him, like, his full potential would be about Bam Adebayo's full potential. But, um, I'm not saying he will be Bam. But, um, yeah, he needs, he is a fine dribbler, fine in transition. Um, I am rambling now, so let's move on. We have fifth pick, Onyeka Kungu. Sixth, the Atlanta Hawks, Tyrese Halliburton. Great pairing with Trey Young. Yes, they are both listed as point guards, but Tyrese Halliburton can, um, can play that combo guard. He has great defense and great offense um, potential. Um, and yeah, like I said, Halliburton can play off the ball. Uh, the main selling point for Tyrese Halliburton is that he's not a small forward. As the Hawks took, uh, as the Hawks have, um, took, no, sorry, took, as the Hawks took Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter last year, uh, they do not need to draft another small forward. Um, shooting guard isn't the greatest of needs, but it, I would still take Tyrese Halliburton over Evdia, Okoro, or whoever wants you to want to throw in there. And Lonzo Ball is a not my favorite comparison, but I just couldn't come up with a better one. Um, he has the size of Lonzo, the defense of uh, defense potential of Lonzo. I think Halliburton will be a better offensive player than Lonzo, but maybe not quite the defense, maybe not quite the playmaker that Lonzo is. Uh, but yeah, Halliburton with the sixth pick. Seventh, Killian Hayes, uh, best player available. I, in my opinion, maybe um, maybe you could consider um, Denny Avdija here as the best player available if that's the way the Pistons want to go. Either one, they're about even, I would say. But I would take Killian Hayes, um, especially because if D Rose doesn't come back, like if he does get traded to the Lakers or signs the Lakers, I don't, I can't remember his exact contract situation. My apologies. But um, yeah, great uh, fit for D Rose if he's not back, and the potential is off the charts. Probably one of the up there in potential. I'd say maybe top three, at least top five. Um, but he has great length, great offensive potential. He doesn't have the best athleticism. Like that first step isn't quite there. But a good comparison would be D Lo. Can put uh, not, yeah, D Lo. Um, can play on, uh, on and off the ball. Good length. Um, not the greatest of athleticism, but still, not bad. Still, like, good athletes. But yeah, um, Killian Hayes, also they're both left-handed. They got that left-hand stroke. Um, yeah, Killian Hayes with the seventh overall pick. Um, eight, here I have Denny of Dia taken. Um, he is the best available, in my opinion. Um, he has great offensive potential, and his defense is serviceable. He's not going to be the like an offensive-only Player like someone I see commonly, ju like the judging scale for Dia is Luka Doncic. Um, probably not a comparison, but a grading scale. Like if you go and compare the two, 
Luka Doncic is the much better offensive talent, though it's it's fairly close based on like uh, Nadia's potential. But then if you compare it to defense, Denny Nadia has a better defensive potential than um, Luka Doncic. But there are many question marks. He hasn't played consistently. He has played pro ball, which does give him a, maybe a slight step up above um, above some of these other players. But still, a lot of question marks for him player. And I think a good comparison is Gordon Hayward. Gives it all, good offensive talent, and plays good enough defense to stay on the floor. Uh, this slide is making me mad. Washington Wizards. I have them selecting Devin Vassell. Uh, now, I did make this before I heard the Wizards weren't selecting or weren't trading um, weren't trading Bradley Beal. Holy cow, my, my, I'm, my head is... Um, I, so, uh, this was my idea was to have the Wizards trade uh, Beal for picks or maybe a decent big man and have Vassell fill in that spot. And there's also trade talks with trade talks with the Wizards with Russ and Wall, which would be interesting having like Devin if if they did decide to move on from Beal. I don't think they will because they said they won't. But that's all I can base it on. Having a Devin Vassell Russell Westbrook backcourt would not be bad, and Vassell can even play the two of the three. Um, and it it came down to him versus Isaac Okoro. Now I'm even more uncertain because the small forward need is now greater than the shooting guard need. But, um, yeah, I like Devin Vassell comparing to Oklahoma City's Kelly Oubre Jr., which I saw a weird post. I, like, Oklahoma City had, like, a post out of Wogan, Oklahoma, like, from two months ago. I'm talking about Kelly Oubre. It looked, it was weird. But, um, but yeah, Vassell's only, one of his few weaknesses, not only weakness, one of his weaknesses is he doesn't have great strength. He needs to build up muscle a bit more, which if Westbrook does end up on the Wizards, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. But I have Devin Sell, great potential, going to the Wizards. Now the Phoenix Suns. Huge trade for Chris Paul. Knocks them out of the um, the point guard the point guard need. And I think they go with Precious Achua. Great fit to go along with. Like, that's their only need, really, is a solid power forward. As they have Chris Paul. They have Booker. They have Mikael Bridges. They have DeAndre Aiden. Um, but their power forward it could be Cam Johnson. Could be Kaminsky. Could be Sarge, probably not. I would take Precious Achua over those three. Um, I think yeah, I think he's a great a fit, strong post player, which doesn't work great with floor spacing, but I think the Suns can make it work with Booker and um, Booker and like the, just the overall movement for the Suns team should be amazing. All young minus Chris Paul, um, he is a little undersized, and he can't stretch the floor too well, which I think is just a perfect comparison to Montrezl Harrell. Like, I just, that's like the, like, even before I did too much research, the first person that popped my head, Montrez Hero. But, um, yeah, I have the Suns taking Precious Achua. Now the Suns, Isaac Coral. No, he's not the greatest fit. Granted, the Spurs don't have too many big needs outside of a big man. Um, I think they would take, if they would take Precious Achua if he fell. Um, but he doesn't. And Isaac Coral is just the best player. Um, he is a good defense. He's a great defense prospect. That's his main selling point. But he needs to improve the offense. Um, the defense can be next level. And the offense, his inside the perimeter offense is one of the better ones in the draft. But to stretch the floor out, especially as a uh, small forward, needs to happen. And Justice Winslow, um, again, it wasn't a huge fan, as I think his defense is better. Doesn't have the ball handling and like the guard abilities that Winslow has, but um, overall a decent comparison. I do think Okor will end up with a better career, especially if he goes to the Spurs. But um, yeah, there's good enough comparison, I think. Oh, the button actually worked. Um, set 12, second round Kings select Patrick Williams. Great fit. Um, this defensive team, I, th I yeah, because they made the trade. Yeah, they don't trade. Okay. So this is a great fit. You now have um, you have Aaron Fox, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, Patrick Williams potentially filling in to that um, small forward spot. Um, Marvin Bagley and what it, like um, Rashawn Holmes, like that starting five, very good defensively and offensively. 
Um, as Patrick Williams has great has great defense, not even great defense potential. He has great defense, but his offensive potential is there. He just needs the drive to score. Like he needs to want to score, especially on this team where um, De'Aaron Fox will be the main leading scorer, but either he or Dante need to step up as a complementary wing, and even Marvin Bagley need to step up. And it is very important if Patrick Williams wants to have a great career. Nick Masseri, in comparison, is Kawhi Young, specifically coming out of San Diego State. We knew of the great defense, but the offense had question marks. I'm not going to say Patrick Williams will be a top player in the NBA. A top player, not the top player. A top player in the NBA, but the potential is definitely there. It's also the, about the same rate where Kawhi got drafted. Dang it, the buttons didn't work this time. 13th, the New Orleans Pelicans select Kira Lewis Jr. This is the other one. Imagine the fast breaks. I mean, filling for Drew Holiday, I had that written before he even got traded. But imagine these fast breaks. Lonzo Ball, Kira Lewis Jr., Brandon Ingram, uh, Zion Williamson, and developing Jackson Hayes. That just sounds perfect. I mean, seriously. that like That's a perfect fast break scenario. Like, if I set up a fast break scenario with like, these current players, the only other person I might add in there would be Giannis. But that's about it. I Kira Lewis fits it will fit him perfectly with his running gun style. Solid defender. He does need to work on his half court set, and I think a perfect comparison is Colin Sexton, only because I went to Alabama. Uh, just kidding. Um, they're both uh, fast players. Can play either the one or the two. And Colin's not perfect in the half court. He's gotten so much better. But um, Kira Lewis definitely has a lot of room to develop, and this is a New Orleans is a perfect place to do that. Why do I even keep trying the button? Okay, I messed up. Pretend that says pick 14. Uh, Boston Celtics select Sadiq Bay. Great stretch four, which the Celtics have loved to have. Would love to have a stretch four, I believe. Especially if they do end up moving on from Hay like Hayward in trade for center. You move Tatum down to the three, have Sadiq Bay. Probably not going to start. But if everything goes right, Put him in as that stretch four, and he, if all things he had, he, if all things were wrong, he just adds more, a bit more size. Um, I think this is much better than taking a point guard for the Celtics, as we don't have a need for it. We're fine with guards; we need more size, uh, and he is a solid defender. Not the best rim protector, but can move his feet fairly good. Um, fairly good on the outside, and a little bit in the post. Not perfect there as he doesn't have great athleticism. But a comparison would be Kevin Love, a stretch four, um, with a bit of height to him, solid defender. Um, yeah, that's my comparison. Not going to try the button. Uh, now the real pick 15, the Orlando Magic select Tyrese Maxey. He is a high potential prospect, as he can be an offensive firecracker. Like, that's... The Kentucky highlights of him are insane. Like, he's making some tough shots, and he is a great athlete. And when played against um, point guards, great defender. But if you match him up against some of these shooting guards, Clay Thompson, um, James Harden, I don't know why that took so long to think of. But he's just not big enough to guard him, in my opinion. He'll, he'd be fine guarding other point guards, I believe. But he just isn't tall enough to play that shooting guard position with um, Markel Fultz. So I think a comparison would be either Lou Will or Malik Monk. Great offensive players, but just lack the defensive, well, the physical side, physical size to play defense. The button worked. Holy cow! So, I was making this, finishing this up on Monday, and um, when I heard that the Rockets were trading picks for uh, with or trading Robert, uh, Robert Covington and Trevor Reza, so this was originally the Portland pick. And I had them selecting Aaron Nesmith, and his comparison was Robert Covington. So I found that pretty funny that um, that they actually trade for traded for a person that they could have had. I think it's fine. Like they, it was a great trade for the Trailblazers. Uh, Rockets are gonna go into rebuild mode. I think Westbrook and Harden are gone. But I'm gonna put a quick plug in right here. I am starting up a podcast. I think. 
the first episode will either be out tomorrow night or um, Thursday because that's my uh, I have something going on tomorrow besides the draft and it'll just be talking about the draft um, and a few other um, a few other like trade rumors NFL stuff um, that's probably it because there's nothing really else happening maybe a little bit of soccer might get into that but yeah if you want to hear my like analysis of what happened in the draft go check out the podcast on um, it should be on a YouTube a YouTube video and then also on Apple podcast it should be top of the hill or something of that matter um, yeah that's that's what all I got for that on now but it'll be a sports podcast maybe I'll, I don't know the exact way I want to take it right now but that's the idea of brewing in my mind I had this my original channel um, was a podcast channel but I prioritized those videos because I wanted to go in a different direction with it. But um, I, I'm going to start it back up. I had too much fun doing it, and I found a great place to... I have it all worked out now. Earlier, I didn't have it all worked out. Now I do. And uh, yeah, so that was just a quick plug. Now back to six, pick 16. Houston Rockets, like Aaron Nesmith. Great shooter. Pro he, he and one other person to come later, probably the best shooter in the draft. He, ha But he has that semi ogley body. We we all saw the pictures of when he and they were going against Giannis. At least I did because I'm a Celtics fan. Where he was not flexing, still had bigger muscles than Giannis flexing. And the defense potential is there. Not the potential is there. The actual skill isn't quite there yet. Um, but the other thing he's working on is inconsistencies. Um, he did grow from his freshman to his sophomore year. But there were still inconsistencies. And I think a perfect comparison is Robert Covington. I mean, the inconsistencies with Robert Covington, you look at real life, you look at 2K, there's huge inconsistencies. I wanted to take a shot at 2K right there. But, um, but yeah, Robert Covington is, can be hot, can be, like, I mean, uh, I think that's a great comparison. But, yeah, pick 16, Rockets take Aaron, Aaron Nesmith, even though they just traded one of him away. Timberwolves select Alexei Pokusevsky. He is definitely not the best available here. But he's the best fit here. Um, he's probably not even the best power forward available. Um, I would probably say that'd be Jalen Smith. But I just don't think it would work out with Jalen Smith and Cat. I know Cat can stretch the floor, but why not have two of those? I mean, Pokusevsky, all we really know about is he can stretch the floor. He looks like a. If I was KD. Like, if I would just grew into Katie's body, that's what he looks like. But um, his offense potential is there. He does have a lot of question marks about whether he's big enough. Like I said, me, let me look at these. Like, that's literally about, eh, probably bigger. But um, that's seriously about the size of Pokusevsky's muscles. I don't know if he can translate well to the um, NBA game, but I think he can be a solid rotational piece. I don't have a comparison on here, but White KD would work pretty well. And I'm sticking with it. I'm going to call him the White KD. Um, yeah, Alexei Pokusevsky, great fit for the Timberwolves. Um, yeah, White KD coming to Minnesota. He's going to be better than Edwards. Pick 18, the Dallas Mavericks let Cole Anthony. This is a perfect spot for Cole Anthony. I mean, you get to go, like, I think this from Cole Anthony's perspective. You go to a contender. Or like a future contender, like you're playing with one of the best players in the world in Luka Doncic, great power forward in Kristaps, and all that's really and this would be a great relief for Cole because if you go and look at his UNC days, he was the offense, right? Now he can be the third, fourth, or fourth option, like six man off the bench, no pressure on him really. He can just activate that microwave, not having to worry. Well, that's not what I'm trying to say. But, um, yeah, he is a microwave. I'll start there first. He is a microwave. His offensive capabilities are amazing. I think in UNC he tried to force too much, and that's where all these questions are coming from. Like, can he actually pass the ball? I don't know for sure. But my guess is playing with other players that are capable he can. He can get the assist that'll make him look more like a true point guard. 
even though Luca will handle a lot of the, the a lot of the ball handling capabilities, or I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. Even though Luca might be the primary ball handler, Cole will still get his assist because he has Luca, Kristaps, Seth Curry, I think. Um, but yeah, CJ McCollum I think is a comparison because CJ we've seen the picture of CJ being shorter, shorter shooting guard. Um, Cole Anthony will probably be asked to play a bit off ball, but um, can handle the ball handling if needed, just like CJ. So yeah, out of the Mavericks taking Cole Anthony. 19, Brooklyn Nets. Josh Green, I think he's the best available. Um, he can do a little bit of everything. Um, his three-point shooting wasn't great, and that was loud. But um, it was it was not horrible, and it definitely has potential. Um, I think he'll be a great bench player. I don't know if he'll ever really start, especially on this Brooklyn Nets team, who are more than likely, I think there's already like a verbal agreement to get James Harden. He's definitely not going to start. But Jay Crowder is a perfect comparison, I think. Good defense, good shooting. Just like, you know, like the skill sets, I have like the circle and like the skills. His is just like perfectly spread out in every direction, at least especially for his potential. And I think the Brooklyn Nets get a great pick here at 19. Now with 20, Jaden McDaniels. Decent stretch four. But the thing, the common thing you'll see here is he's raw, and we don't know too much about him. He has great potential. Like he was one of the top recruits, but he showed flashes of what he could do in Washington. But he also he also just provided more question marks. He's a great athlete, has great potential. Can shoot the ball, can play defense, and I think a comparison is Jonathan Isaac. I mean, he's Jonathan Isaac is. We still don't know exactly what he can turn into, and I just think the power forwards. I guess on Isaac's power forward, small forward. The Magic team in general is just weird. But yeah, I think Jamie McDaniels, the Heat will be happy with this pick as they're one of the best developing teams along with Boston, um, Toronto, uh, San Antonio. One of the better developing teams and can develop Jamie McDaniels into exactly what they need him to be. 21, the Philadelphia 76ers. Tyrell Terry would, be, would compete for Aaron Nesmith for best shooter in the draft. I did write top three, but um, I think he and Nesmith are one and two. I don't know the exact order, but those two are definitely one and two. Um, he is, Tyrell Terry is a well-rounded offensive player, and while he doesn't have great like on-ball defense, he has great defensive anticipation. But another thing would be he needs a bigger frame. To me, this sounds just like Stephen Curry. Like I'm not. I know Curry's probably like one of the probably the like the top two most influential player in the top in the 2010s, and I'm not saying Tyler Terry's gonna be that for the 2020s. But when like top three shooter in the draft, that's all we knew Curry would could do. Well rounded, rounded offensive player. Um, the passing wasn't necessarily there for Curry. We now know he can. Not great defense, but good anticipation. Curry gets his steals. Bigger frame. Curry got a bigger frame. He was skinnier than I am right now. It just sounds perfect to me. And it's exactly what the 76ers need. So this is a perfect pick for them and could honestly be the steal of the draft. Maybe. I don't know for sure. But um, yeah. Moving on to pick number 22, the Denver Nuggets select RJ Hampton and his many question marks. I mean, we thought we knew who he was, and then he went to Australia, and now we have no clue. But we do know he has great size and great upside, which sound a lot like Dante Exum to me. Like, we didn't know too much about him when he played in Australia. Um, a lot of question marks. But the, the main thing here, the Nuggets can afford to take risks. I mean, they just got to the Western Conference Finals on the back of Jamal Murray. And, like, Nikola Jokic gave him, like, a little push. But on the back of Jamal Murray, they but they got there. They were the number three seed. And they can afford to take a risk, like R.J. Hampton. I mean, they I probably should have thrown the Denver Nuggets in with the best one of the best developing teams. I mean, Jokic, Murray, Porter Jr., Bull Bull, Nurkic was on that team. 
trying to think who else. But the Denver Nuggets have been a traditionally like pretty good drafting team. And I think they can afford to take a risk here with R.J. Hampton, especially with the potential so high. 23, Utah Jazz. Um, Nico Mannion. Beautiful fit. I mean, he has loads of potential. Can help take the offensive load off Mitchell. Very good in half-court sets. His shot, shot selection needs a little bit of help. And Luke Ridenour. Just, I, it feels right. I, I don't know what it is, but watching Ridenour highlights compared to Mannion, it just looks right. And this is just a beautiful fit for everyone. I mean, Mannion stays in the West. Jazz get a point guard because Conley looked fine, but didn't. Yeah, like, Conley was off and on. I think the other pick here that could be considered is um, Jalen Smith. But um, I don't know for sure. Or not J Yeah, Jalen Smith. I think uh, it's fitted that power forward, power forward role. But I do think Nico Mannion will be the pick here. At 24, I have the, um, the Bucks. I don't know if this will go to the um the pelicans are not i don't think so but i'm also not entirely certain <laughs> but i'm sticking that the bucks have it and i think they select theo maladin great potential i know they just traded for drew holiday could be a great mentor for maladin uh, he's a good facilitator good iq his only real weak weak uh, knock on him it's like his main knock is he's not a good athlete like he's about average, which I guess is a great athlete, but for NBA standards, average athlete. And it took a little bit of convincing, but once I finally looked at Shai Gilders Alexander, fits perfectly the potential, the facilitator, the IQ. Like all those points, to an extent, fill out with Shai's pretty well. 25, the Oklahoma City Thunder, Jalen Smith. He can stretch the floor. He's a great rim protector, and he runs the floor very well. Like, and then also, have you seen? He's massive. He's huge. Maybe not height, but he's big. And the only thing that the only down thing that comes with those big muscles, he's a little bit robotic. Doesn't move as fluid um, as fluid as some other big men do. And I think a comparison is Serge Ibaka. Stretches the floor, protects the rim, runs. Any Oklahoma City Thunder, it just works too well. 26, the Boston Celtics. Staying with the size. Even though Isaiah, St Isaiah Stewart is an undersized center, he plays big. Um, he isn't the best of athlete, and he needs a lot of work. But he's a good um, he's a good rebounder. Works his butt off. Zach Randolph. The yeah, Another one I was thinking of was current Celtics center, Robert Williams. Undersized. Plays big. But I went with Zach Randolph. But um, another comparison could be um, Robert Williams. Next, the New York Knicks select Trey Jones. He's the best player available. He's a great leader, which I think the Knicks desperately need. They need somebody there who can lead something. I mean, that's they haven't had a leader there since Melo. And that worked out well. But, um, but yeah, his offensive potential... As a facilitator, facilitator are amazing, and his defensive potential also amazing. He has only um, promise needs to cons develop consistency on offense, and I think he can. Um, not being the sole offensive focus, which he wasn't really on Duke, but he was seen as the leader, which he might be seen here. Though I think RJ and Julius Randle will probably be like the real le leaders, captains, um, Tyus Jones, or not Tyus, it's a comparison. Trey Jones can focus more on the facilitating to Julius Randle, to RJ, to Denny. And as I mentioned, comparison, Tyus Jones, it was too easy for me to admit, like, that's just, so I gave another one, Ron Rondo, um, facilitator with defensive potential, great, well, solid, like, focus leader, like knowing what needs to be done. Those are the two comparisons I went with. 28, Oklahoma City Thunder, Jameis Ramsey. 
I think he's the best available. Texas Tech. Um, but he also provides great bench depth along with the um, with SGA. Backport now fill, could fill in for um, for Schroeder for um, however long is needed. But overall provides great bench depth and great energy. The only concern is his free throw percentage. Is, well, not only concern. There's a lot of concerns. The only concern I want to focus on is his free throw percentage is not good. And that's not great when comparing the shooting not like from college to the NBA level. But I think his energy and um, just his like his hustle, his willingness to work, will get him enough. Will be enough to pick him here. And Rodney Magruder, I think, is a fine pick. I don't know too much about Magruder, but from what I did see, looked pretty similar. Now the Toronto Raptors, uh, Desmond Bain. For some reason, to me, he just feels like a Raptors player, like someone that's a little bit that could be um, undervalued. Like, I think I'm higher on Desmond Bain than a lot of people are. Granted, that's just how it goes with most. But um, but he feels like someone the Raptors can just turn into a star. Like, Can we think of any other instances they've done this with? I don't know, Siakam, Van Vliet, um, Norman Powell. Um, but yeah, he just feels like someone the Raptors can turn into someone great. Um, he's a great shooter, has a bigger body. Ken, big dude. Um, his athleticism, athleticism isn't there, but um, he's a lot of potential for that athleticism. And Gary Trent Jr. is a pretty good comparison. Like Gary Trent, which is bigger. Like bigger muscles. That's what you mean by bigger. And finally, pick number 30. The Boston Celtics select, select Robert Woodard II. And as you can see with my bullet points, I got very lazy. He is physical. He is versatile. He has potential, but he just needs to learn. I'm an expert analyst. But yeah, he's, no, again, big dude. Like, there's just a lot of muscly dudes in here. <laughs> like, there's just a lot of, like, a, a smaller players that just play big. Like, Robert Woodard, um, he's not, like, like, he plays bigger than his size. He's very versatile, has a lot of potential, both offensively, defensively, and Tobias Harris. Um, maybe not the height perfectly, but overall skill set, I'd say Tobias Harris. So, that'll do it. For my mock draft, um, yeah, hi, it's me, you get to see me no matter what. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much for watching as I try and turn this off. There we go. Okay, I'm just making this worse. There we go. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Um, please go check out the podcast, Top of the Hill. Uh, sorry for the long video. I, well, I'm pointing to the time, you can't see the time. The time's going to be down here think. But uh, thank you all very much for watching. Have an amazing day. Adios.